And good evening and welcome to the April 25th meeting of the Murfreesboro City School Board. We're glad to have those of you that are with us tonight in attendance and we're glad to have those that are at home or somewhere watching us on live television. At this time, I'm gonna ask you to stand as we have Brooklyn Chamley, a sixth grade student at Black Fox, and also Kenton Tracy, a third grade student at Northfield to lead us in our pledge followed then by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now our moment of silence. Thank you. All right, members of the board, you have the agenda in front of you, and you've had an opportunity to look at it beforehand. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Thank you, Ms. Renier. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. King. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? And there is none. Thank you very much. Communication, Dr. Gilbert. Yes. <clears throat> Tonight, we are honored to honor uh, really a mentor of mine. I have tremendous respect for this man. He has absolutely changed this community. When you think about what he's done from establishing Reed to succeed to the work that he's done with the university to the work that he's done with the Rutherford County Schools and Murfreesboro City Schools, it's pretty amazing. So he has a good heart. He has a good brain. And that you can't beat that combination. So tonight we're here to honor Paul Vaughn. And I'm going to ask uh, Stacy Burt and Leah Barch if you would please come forward. And I'm going to turn this over to you. So, good evening. About three years ago, um, about this time three years ago, Murfreesboro City School embarked on a journey to provide teachers with support for teaching our high achieving students and gifted learners. Our goal was simple. At the conclusion of the three year period, we would have one teacher per grade level per school trained um, with the Tennessee Employment Standard for teaching gifted students. This time next year, we will have trained 96 classroom teachers. That's roughly 25%, a quarter of the teachers that work for our system. Um, and they will have impacted roughly 3,080 students over that three year period of time. So we believe it's important to acknowledge at this time also that none of this progress um, could have been possible without the very generous funding from the Jennings and Rebecca Jones Foundation. So right now we're going to show you a small or a short um, said pull it hard, video that kind of showcases some things that happened at our gifted academy this past well, April.
party without food, right? <laughs> um, but we will begin our third cohort in May. They'll have a month of online classes. So we have about 36, we're still finalizing some of those spots, 36 to 38 students, or students, uh, teachers for the next cohort. Um, we do have some people in this audience that have been through the cohorts, the gifted cohorts, and we'd like to ask them to stand just for a minute so that you can see those people and appreciate them coming out tonight. So at this time, we'd like to take a moment to hear firsthand how the gifted Academy has impacted one school, Northfield Elementary in particular. So I'm honored to present Dr. Jean Lloyd. Okay, I'm excited about sharing with you just a little bit how this has impacted our school. Uh, the Gifted Academy, we've had teachers to go to the Gifted Academy and they bring it back and Stacy Bird has been meeting with them monthly and while we were sitting around the table talking, we're talking about Kaplan's. And of course, you know, I have to catch up a little bit sometimes and they start talking about what Kaplan's is and it's, it's a way of thinking and, and how you might think from a multiple perspective idea or how you might be looking for details in something. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, that organizes your thinking. So as we talked about that, our uh, teachers, that's, they wanted to get more into it. So. Stacy Burt and um, Ms. Easterly, Sarah Easterly, our, our coach, started presenting to our whole faculty because we got to thinking, okay, this might work with our gifted kids, but I think, uh, or we thought, that this way of thinking would be good for everybody in the building. So we have trained most of our teachers on Kaplan's and a way of thinking. And just, I've uh, just the way we you've heard of I can statements like a target they put up in the classroom well we're changing that from an I can statement to a learning target throughout our building and I just give you an example like if originally it said look for the characters actions we've taken the Kaplan's and put in there and said look for patterns in the characters actions so we've in incorporated the word patterns now the kids know oh I look for a pattern and then we take blooms and look is kind of low on blooms so we try to up it and for example you, you really could get challenging judge the ethics of the patterns we see in a character's actions so we're really trying to uh, take our learning targets and, and move them up a notch on blooms and with Kaplan's and something I have noticed as an observer in the classrooms and I, I see more depth and the thinking and the talking that's going in the classroom. So I think that <laughs> is really impacting the students. And I, I want to give you a quick example, and then I'm going to share. I want two fabulous teachers to share with you. Um, I was in a pre-K classroom, and you think, pre-K? How are they going to get into this? Well, one of Kaplan's is multiple perspectives. And the, kid, the lesson was about, you know, about the Billy Goat and the trolls and going across the bridge and all that kind of thing. Well, they're talking about it and the kids are talking about, oh, that mean old troll knocking those Billy Goats off the bridge and all that kind of thing. And then at the end, the Billy Goat knocks the troll off. And one kid says, well, that was mean. <laughs> so, wait a minute now, we went from talking about how mean the troll was to how mean the Billy Goat was. So they got into and actually started using the word multiple perspectives because now you've got a Billy Goat's perspective and now you've got a perspective from the troll. And the kids talking about that. What we're trying to do is establish that vocabulary throughout our building. So anytime a teacher says multiple perspective or if they say details or they say rules or over time or any of those words, the kids will know what it means to our building. So it all started through the Gifted Academy and them talking about how that impacts their classrooms, but we just thought that's good thinking for all kids. So we've taken it throughout the building. And uh, so uh, there's two teachers that's gonna share with you tonight, Judy Gritton and Mary Orcutt. Uh, 
they have just jumped in and it's made a difference in their classroom but I'm not going to go there I'm going to let our heroes of the moment step up to the mic <laughs> Mary and I attended the Gifted Academy this past year and finished on um, April the 8th. And on our last day, our final project was a video in which we highlighted um, our struggles and our victories, our aha moments, and our hurdles. Unfortunately, we're unable to show our video. So at this time, Mary and I are going to um, briefly share with you our journey. Last spring, we received an email asking if we would be interested in attending uh, the Gifted Academy. And of course, we go when we seek out the other teachers in the building that had participated, and it was hands down, go. This is what you want to do. You're going to love it. So of course, we accepted. Like in the next day, boom, homework. <laughs> you know, homework in the month, the last two months of school is really not. <laughs> so Mary and I are just like, what have we done? What have we done? We have got report cards to do. We've got to get our room ready. We've got to make sure the kids have, we've checked off all our whole list. And so we're very overwhelmed with all this information and knowledge that we have. So we're, what are we going to do? It was almost like we needed superpowers. Super <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Now you're at our level. <laughs> Thank you. And we were very honored when Dr. Lloyd delivered us our superpower cakes. Mm -hmm. And throughout this year, we really feel like that we have earned our superpowers. We have learned, we've realized that students can learn in many, many, many ways, and that it's not just the gifted learners that benefit from the strategies and instructions that we learned at the Gifted Academy. Um, Dr. Lloyd mentioned Kaplan's, and I can't say enough about Kaplan's. When I started writing my learning targets and Dr. Lloyd saying, guys, we've got to get deeper, it was one of those aha moments like, oh, I can put those Kaplan icons in my learning targets. And Kaplan teaches students to think about their thinking. And it truly opens the door for Socratic seminars and for our STEAM units that we've been teaching. And it's just, Fabulous. Mm -hmm. So this year we feel like that we've really been empowered by the Gifted Academy. And um, we left the Gifted Academy thinking we just really needed to pay it forward. We felt like that we needed to share this information with as many people as possible. Um, we felt like everyone needs to know this. They need to see the benefits. And um, we also realized that it wouldn't be possible without the funding for the Gifted Academy. So um, just like we earned our superpowers tonight, we would like to honor Mr. Paul Vaughn and the Jennings and Rebecca Jones Foundation with his... <laughs> <laughs> We would also like to say a thank you to our school board that without your constant support that we truly appreciate um, and we would like to give you and leave with you superpowers. Thank you for what you're doing. No kidding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, very much. Thank what does the GA stand for? Gifted Academy. Gifted Academy. Okay. Thank you. This is awesome. I want you now steam music. I wasn't thinking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have to speak, but if you would like to say anything, the <laughs> mic is yours. <laughs> <laughs> you did 
did the next will, one. Will you please turn around so we can see what's on the back of your cape? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> you all have done an excellent job of describing the Gifted Academy, its objectives, and some of its results. The foundation is it's one of our premier, our flagship projects. I don't know if you remember, but funding for gifted kids has come a long way. Mm -hmm. And now we're, we're at a point where we can really make significant progress. And it's not just about gifted kids. I think you've heard something here. I, I was privileged to uh, attend a meeting where a principal of one of your major schools became emotional about the impact that the students from the gifted academy have made in his school. Mm -hmm. They become leaders, they become role models, they become mentors, and it trickles down. And this is something that I've always wanted to have happen, that the, the benefits from these folks amongst their peers is resulting in better learning for all of the children in your purview. And for this, I'm extremely <clears throat> pleased. And on behalf of the, the foundation, I thank you for recognizing the benefit that this is having. And I wish you well in the future. Thank you. Mr. Vaughn, I think you have shown that, and I know your thanks from you to us and all, but I think we are the ones that have benefited the most. Wait a minute, let me go back. <laughs> our students have benefited the most, and our teachers have benefited the most because of the dedication and the leadership that you and the foundation have provided for us. And we could never thank you enough but we certainly do appreciate all the work and everything that, that you and the foundation has done for our students and our teachers in Murfreesboro City Schools. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to note about Mr. Vaughn. He has been helping this Murfreesboro City Schools for a very long time. And um, one of the ways that I know that he helped is that he was one of the initial board members for the City Schools Foundation uh, 12 years ago. And he got in there and he dug in and got his facts and tried to really set up a worthwhile organization. And we have you to thank for many of the um, services that it's provided. So thank you on that end as well. I'm going to interject real quick here one more time. I noticed today on the news media that Central Magnet School has been recognized as the top, top school in the state, academically and otherwise, and 10th in the nation. I can't help believe, but believe that because of our students from Murfreesboro City Schools that go to Central Magnet School, We've had a big hand in doing that, and all that has come because of what you and the foundation has done. I congratulate Central Magnet School, but I also congratulate the student body that's there and mm -hmm. the students that we have sent there. Well, you hit upon a good <coughs> point, but I'm really now I'm turning my attention to how do we transition these gifted children who have had the benefit of this learning and the, the high achieving student, how do we transition them up the ladder, so to speak? So we're working with the county <clears throat> to, to find ways to make it a, a more seamless transition. Well, it, it is truly a partnership between the two school systems for the academic su success that comes about from any school in Rutherford County and Murfreesboro as well. Ms. Trail? 
Thank you, sir. So just to follow up on Dr. Lloyd, if you would like to see Dr. Lloyd fly through the <laughs> hallways of Northfield like Superman, their video is online, so just go to the City Schools website. And it, I think the title is We, we Teach Gifted Learners. Just want to plug you there, sir. <laughs> Notice that you tripped a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, moving on, uh, congratulations to fifth grade Discovery School students for placing first in the Earth Day video contest that was held last Saturday at Earth Day. Uh, the, team cons the team's name was Let's Be <coughs> Heroes and included Nij Patel, Alex Merchant, and Hank Wells. I also want to say a big thank you to Miss Melissa Carnes and the Discovery School staff. They um, really get their students involved and we were happy to have all of the entries from Discovery School as well as across the district. Um, and their video, the one that won Earth Day, is also posted on the City Schools website. So Murfreesboro City Schools would also like to congratulate Oliver Pepper. He is a first grade, first grade student at Irma Siegel for receiving the third place award in the Special Kids 5K race in his age group. Uh, he is the son of Rachel Pepper and she's a fourth grade teacher at Irma Siegel. Also congratulations to Case and Lane's Alyssa Perez who placed second at the Read to Be Spelling Bee this past week. Also to Richard Hunter from Scales who placed third. Congratulations to Discovery School fifth grade students, Hank Wells, Nish Patel. Whoops, I'm doing it again, sorry. It was written down twice. Um, once again, they still place first in Earth Day video. <laughs> <laughs> um, Murfreesboro City Schools would also like to congratulate the City School art winners and uh, those who are out on your walls, they're gonna, or out on the walls of Rotunda, they're gonna be moved to MTSU as well. Best to show was Mallory Ovalle Daracha <coughs> from Hobgood. Best of schools was Overall Creek Elementary. And best of art teachers was Dee Dee Potter from Hobgood Elementary. Congratulations to Case and Lane's Sarah Chumney, who will be representing Murfreesboro City Schools as part of the Department of Education, Science, and Social Studies Standards Review process. We're also excited to announce that Murfreesboro City Schools will receive two of the state's Read to Be Ready grants. The district grant is for $37,600 and will provide a summer reading camp for 40 students over a five week period this summer. Those are for the title schools and it will be held at Hobgood and Pittard. Bradley also received a grant for $27,000 and will serve 30 students over a four week period this summer. Both, uh, both of these grants have a parent component and involve multiple community partners. Once you'll see this on and on every time in my communications without our community partners, it's hard for us to have true success. Uh, thank you to Discovery Center for partnering with Bradley Academy to create an interactive beat lab class for Bradley students. Students learn the basics of creating music by integrating math and science and then composing their own song and music to go along with it. Uh, thank you to the art to the Center for the Arts for writing a $5,000 grant to provide 15 Bradley students with a two-week tuition-free summer camp focused on theater and the arts. Thank you to D&D Oil for bringing Best the Book Bus to Bradley Academy. This is the second time Best the Book Bus has made it to Bradley this year. She also made it to Hobgood uh, as well. I think this was a week and a half ago. Um, they also, when best the book bus comes, make sure every child goes in it, every child gets a book of their choice. And the choices range from preschool uh, age books all the way to sixth grade. It's an amazing experience for the children. Um, also, D&D sponsored the Arts Night at Bradley and provided dinner for the families while they were there enjoying their Night of the Arts. Bradley Academy would like to thank City Church for their constant support and dedication to the community. Every staff member has been adopted by a city church member and receives regular reminders that they are appreciated. A really nice thing to see. Murfreesboro City Schools would like to thank Murfreesboro Lions, Lioness Club for their $200 donation to the Backpack Food Program. They continue to support this program through the school year, both with monetarily and with food donations. Uh, the Integrated Preschool Program is accepting applications for peer models for the 2017-18 school year. You can find out more details about that on the City Schools website. Um, and then if they, anyone has questions, they can call Kelly Blanchard. She's the person that knows about the Integrated Preschool Program. St. Thomas Health will host a day of home health and healing on Saturday, April 29th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, free services will include a range of medical, vision, and dental care. 
This will be held on the campus of Hobgood Elementary. This is a community-wide uh, day for any type of medical, uh, dental, vision, lots of different opportunities if you know someone who would uh, benefit from this. Again, this is a partnership between St. Thomas Health and Murfreesboro City Schools. It will be hosted at Hobgood. Black Fox would like to invite you to the Asian Cultural Night on May 11th at 6 p.m. This is a great night at Black Fox. Uh, the booths are amazing. The interaction is amazing. The food is amazing. Uh, several of our schools will also be competing in Science Olympiad, and that will be this Saturday, uh, April the 29th. It is hosted at John Pittard Elementary. This is sponsored by MTSU. The MCS retirement reception has been tentatively set for Tuesday, May 23rd before the board meeting at 5 o'clock in the City Hall Rotunda. So if you will go ahead and put that on your agendas, we'd appreciate that. Also, the employee recognition celebration is uh, scheduled to be held Wednesday, May 10th at 6 p.m. at the Grove at Williamson Place. We will also celebrate Teacher Appreciation Week May 8th through 12th. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, very much. You, I guess you have, everybody has received the, also the groundbreaking for the library facility is May 23rd on the Hobgood campus. We want to mark that down as a, something we would like to attend. All right, consent items. Do I have a motion to approve the consent items? So moved. Thank you. Have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ballard. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? <clears throat> All right, action items. Your first action item is approval of the general fund, ESP budget, and cafeteria budgets. Mr. Anderson. Dr. Gilbert, good evening, board. Uh, we bring to you a balanced budget, which is always good news. Uh, after the work sessions that we had earlier in the month, we have uh, gotten our EEP number from the state. We have had communications with the city and the county for our anticipated property tax and, and sales tax numbers. And based on the information we got and some of the uh, changes we made in the expenditure lines, uh, we do have a balanced budget that satisfies the state's maintenance of effort requirement and it also uh, gives us the appropriate fund balance that is needed to pass the state uh, approvals. So I don't know what questions you might have for me on this, but we sent you an email uh, Friday that explained what we, ha what we had done to the budget to make everything fit together. Um, as far as our fund balance goes, we anticipate adding $1,266,000 to the fund balance, which brings it to $4,564,000. We are funding this budget by utilizing some fund balance dollars, $2,103,000, which leaves us a fund balance of $2,460,000. And the state minimum required is $2,262,000, which means we are in the black. We have green numbers, which means go from the state. It says we're good to go. We do have, we will have enough fund balance to make it work. So I just wanted to run all those things by you and see if you have any questions for us. You might have any questions pertaining to Mr. Anderson's report. Appreciate you getting that to us. Yes, sir. No questions? I'd just like to have a motion for approval from you for the uh, general right. purpose budget, the ESP budgets, and the cafeteria budgets. Thank you. Okay. Can you do it as one item or three separate? Ms. Baker, do you want it split up or can I do it as one? I can do it as one if it's all in agreement. Okay. Mr. Ballard? Uh, just one question, Mr. Anderson. The, um, to be sure, you know, belt and suspenders, sure. The um, $75,419,184 budget, uh, the funding that we show or the revenues that we show, are all for sure revenues that we're going to see. Is that is that the way I should interpret that? Or is there still some there, unknowns in this number? Well, there's always unknowns in sales tax collections. Depends on the economy, what happens. That is 
what our sales tax number is based on a 3.8 percent increase that aligns with what the state is saying and what the county and city governments are saying so we use their estimated number to do this so you're pretty sure about these numbers then. <laughs> You're going to bet the farm on this. <laughs> um, I'll follow up with the with the uh, the legislature just passing the uh, Improve Act and the governor's tax on uh, uh, gasoline. I know there was a reduction in gas. I mean, in food tax mm -hmm. that was in in play there. Do you foresee or have you had any discussions about whether that's going to impact sales tax income? No, I, I, our increase in sales tax this year was pushing eight and nine percent and I think that's why all the governmental entities have come in with a lower number because they're really not sure what's going to happen with that and that was all done before all these numbers were put together before the state gave us their estimated number so I don't really know how much it will but we can always during the year we can always go back and make adjustments yeah. as we need to okay all right thank you Mr. Barrett <clears throat> I just want to add we had several meetings where we went through this line by line discussed every line item in our budget so i'm going to go ahead and make a motion that we approve the budget second thank you mr settles any other discussion or questions we have a motion to approve the budget and a second all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposition and there is none thank you very much thank you mr anderson for some good news thank you thank you your next action item is really based on what the legislature has recently done. So we need to update our board policy 4.700 testing programs. Previously, we were required to decide whether we wanted to go with 15% up to, I think, 35% of the time. This board had decided on 15% of the uh, TCAP scores being fit, Part of the final grade of the students so now the law is that if um, we get the scores in any later than five days then they will count 10 percent of the students final grade so we need to adjust that policy from 15 percent to 10 percent based on the state law that was passed and signed last week as a matter of fact mr barrett so the Highlighted in red is the only change in this. That's policy. right. Okay. I will be coming back to you because it also affects next year's, but I want to wait and let this settle first. But we need to go ahead and get this passed because it does, does affect this year's scores if we get them back early enough. Now, what we've been told is we don't think that they'll come back early enough, which would make me extremely happy, but because I just don't like including them in the students' mm -hmm. final grade, but that's Linda Gilbert's opinion. All right, do we have a motion to approve the policy? With changes? I have a question. Okay. Or do we need to? No, we can, you can ask a question before the motion. Did you say we will discuss this at a later time too? We will for the, for the next years because right now the way the law reads, Ms. Rainier, is I believe that it's 10% this year and then 15% and then the board has to take a vote on what percentage will be after that. But I want to go ahead and get this taken care of because I think you all need some time to think about the rest of it. But this year we don't have a choice. It's 10%. Ms. Smith? Okay, so it's 10% no matter what, which is great. That's down from 15%. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what we asked. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, but if they don't get the scores in, it's nothing. That's right. And um, first of all, I, I'm, I've been, not been hearing a lot of complaints this year, which is terrific in comparison to last year at this time. Okay. Um, but um, do we so you don't think that they're going to get in still you think I don't think we have been told that they will probably come in on the Monday before we're out on Thursday oh my gosh so that would be so that would be yeah, we'll that know. would be within that How time we, can we try to get this score somehow to the parents anyway we will oh that's not a problem Okay. The quick scores can come out. If they come in on Monday, we'll, we'll be ready to roll with that. But as far as, as equating it into the grade, we will not do that. So we have the quick score and then the, the um, comprehensive score will be in when? October. Wow. It's what we're guessing because they have to, they do what's called standard setting, which is figuring out where, where the cut scores are going to, 
it's, anyway, they figure it out. Guess where they rank, whether they're proficient or advanced, or they have to go through that. Well, I appreciate the um, teachers making it, uh, and it was a lot less stressful. Good. Ms. Renier? I just have a question since we're kind of looking at this policy. Um, just at the very beginning when it talks about the purposes of the program, we know number two to determine the progress of the students, but when we get down to number seven, assist in placing students in remedial programs, should that not also say and or gifted We, we could do that we, if you want to do that. Oftentimes, you know, teachers look at the records, look right. at test scores, and that's one indication of a child who is performing right. better than some. And, you know, that was way back when I was teaching when I was five, then we could <laughs> um, use that for right. information for the students. So I just thought that maybe both needed to be in there. Okay. Yeah. Since, okay. since we're talking about testing, this year was paper. Is, is next year going to be online, or are they still working there? Fifth and sixth will be optional next year, and then then we move the next year to online. So fifth two and years sixth. from now, it'll be online. Okay. Eighteen, nineteen. Now you have high schools. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mr. Seven, I want to be sure we. Ms. Rainier, if you wanted to add that before we take action on it? I would like to, I think. I agree. <clears throat> so shall I, we've already had a motion or have we not? I can't remember. No, no. okay. No then I'll make a, a motion if that is at the right time. Fine. I move that we um, approve testing programs, descriptor 4.700 with the addition on number seven um, assisting place assist in placing students in remedial programs and or gifted programs okay. with that one change you heard the motion to have a second second thank you Ms. Smith any other discussion question on the motion or the policy all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposition <laughs> and there is none thank you okay. let me ask a question I do not remember who I was talking to <coughs> not long ago, in the last week or two. And they were talking about the test. <coughs> Excuse me. And the writing test was being done on computer? Not that, not that I'm aware of. Well, maybe not. Maybe now, not. we have the, the ESL, is, is it not, Joe? Well, but not the writing test. Not the writing, right, okay. no. That's the only one that we would have that would be. They, what they were saying was that the students had to write something, but instead of like writing it out like I would think longhand or whatever, they were doing it on the computer. I mean, that may be secondary, I don't know. But I thought it was awful strange. Really strange. Secondary, high schools do take, uh, some high schools are taking their intercourse tests via computers, but, but not all. Okay, all right. One quick, okay. One quick question. All right, Mr. King. Dr. Gilbert, just on this policy, it says um, the state has to give us our grades uh, five days before the end of the school year. Am I right? May 25th, Thursday is our last day. Mm -hmm. So they've got to give it to us by the 18th. Okay, be interesting to see. I would be very surprised if we get them back. They're projecting it. The earliest would be that Monday. Monday the 20th or whatever? Whatever, the Monday of the last week we're in. Okay, that'd be the 22nd. Okay. Interesting. Probably the old saying, don't hold your breath, but uh, yeah, mm. yeah. would be uh, <laughs> applicable here. It'd be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Sure. As long as they get the, as the parents get their quick scores. <coughs> The next action item is the advisory board of the Family Resource Center. You have the list before you, and we do need a motion for approval. I will. Mr. Ballard? I have a question, if I can um, just update 
me on what the Family Resource Center is and what the function of the advisory board is. Okay. Uh, Greg, would you like to, I can explain it, but since you're here, Greg is <laughs> head of outreach and that falls under him and so you can explain some of the things that they're doing. The Family uh, Learning and Resource Center is um, partially funded by the state. Uh, we get a grant for that. Uh, but basically it's a location, physical location in a sense where we can offer um, services uh, to parents. They have the option of coming in, working on job searches, have access to the internet and so forth. And we offer um, parenting classes in the afternoon and evenings to them uh, as well. And we're currently, uh, since you know we've been out of Franklin Heights since December a year ago, and we're currently working on securing another location here in town. So, mm -hmm. uh, but the advisory uh, committee basically uh, made up community partners uh, that help us offer programs and services to parents through the Family Resource Center. And it's a component that's required by the state for the grant that we receive. Okay. How, how, Greg, how are these uh, members of the board selected or determined? Those are individuals, most of them roll over from Franklin Heights. Um, just those that have an interest in our programs and those, a lot of them are from organizations that we've partnered with to offer uh, services through the center. Uh, do, you, do you serve on this board as well? Yes as, I guess, the uh, chairperson, I guess. Chair, you okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure we had somebody yeah, from oh, yes. city schools that yes. was there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, We're going to approve the board. I want to know who we got to go back and our, to. And also, our outreach yeah. coordinators are also a part of that. Okay. All right. Yes. Mr. Settle? I just wanted to ask, so you all reach out to the to our partners, basically, to get the members? Yes. Is that something that you Yes, sir. That's, that's how I understood it. Any other questions? I have a motion to approve the advisory board. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. You have a second? Second. Mr. Settles, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposition? And there is none. Thank you. All right. Those are your action items. Okay. Nothing Anything else. else to come before the board? Action. Uh, you have a, I, I think everybody got a an agenda of the legislative conference in uh, Gatlinburg. I believe our board secretary has made reservations for everybody or enough for everybody. If you would like to go, we probably need to let Lisa know pretty quick because I know those rooms are at a <laughs> peak. Not people that get there late don't get to the rooms there, so. We need let we need let Lisa know so we can either, we can confirm or and if we need to give up a room give up rooms whatever. Also, uh, don't forget the district meetings. We talked about that a little bit at the uh, last week. That be make. I, I did contact the county chairman today, school board chairman, and they have not discussed anything at all pertaining to it, but. I think our opinion was to go to Tullahoma, am I right? I don't remember the date, but it was Tullahoma. September or something. Was it the 21st? Hold on, I've got it on. Oh, the 21st. September. So if, Sometime you, in September. if you want to go, we need to let Lisa know about that too, so she can at least call TSBA and tell them we'll be there and we'll not be at a faraway place that they wanted us to go to. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's it on? Anything else come up before the board? If not, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Settle. Mr. Barrett, second. All in favor? Good night. <laughs>